Hey, 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 you guys. Thank you, Jesus. How is everybody? Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey there, good morning. Kind of situating myself here. Hey, you guys. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. about unity being restored. Good morning. We are Christians by Well, they know that you belong to Jesus by the way that you love others. angels to be around those children right now in Jesus name. Lord, we thank you for unity. We thank you for who you are. You're welcome here today on this live stream, Lord God. You are welcome. up on somebody's fear right now. You see them coming for you. You can see and hear and feel the terror that the enemy has for you. But I tell you, it will be turned back. A wave of jealous love for you is swamping your enemy. You hear me? Hear me on that. Not only is God jealous, but jealous is his name. We're the apple of his eye. Who would touch daddy? Who would go and touch us? He'd be poking daddy in the eye. Come on. so good. There are so many schisms in families, in the church, come on, in, not just in the world, but in the beloved, come on, in the bride. The bride of Christ, that's you and I, that's us. I just put a wind, a wave, a wall. The breath of the Lord, these are all manifestations of Holy Spirit between you and demonic interference, between you and a demonic assassination attempts and strategies to bring you or your family or your business or your ministry down. We just command angels to uh, unravel the plans of the enemy right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. 
I had to tap that out, obviously, if they can't hear anything, then they have to leave the video and come back. Come on, you won't let pain have its way. Don't let pain have its way. Come on. I'm going to trust in the Lord. You're going to trust in the Lord. I decree and declare that over you right now. You're going to trust in the Lord. Woo! I will say this. The great dragon that breathed on you, its flame took on some type of a backdraft. It actually turned back on itself. The harm that it meant for you was in what it went back into its own self its own wind chambers its own lungs whatever came to take you out was taken down I'm just decree and declare a job for him right now Callie a job and Father God come in with your love your healing balm your love Lord your love Lord let him know you're there to protect him, to vindicate him, to care for him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are some of you, the enemy walked up to you. You were unaware of this. It was in the realm of the spirit. And it tried to uh, literally rip your body parts off of you. But I tell you right now, that did not work. All it did was begin to dismember itself. Because you're hidden in the Lord. And what it ended up grabbing, because it's walking in darkness, it grabbed its own self and began to annihilate its own self. We decree and declare that right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. English breakfast tea <laughs> with milk. And a pinch of stevia. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. The song says, Shake off the doubt. Shake off religion. Shake off religion. good relationships, divine relationships. Come on. Many of you have already connected to the good relationships. Come on, you're connected. Don't forget we got that prayer class tonight, you guys. I can't wait to see y'all in there. It's an intensive, so those videos are longer than the standard eight weeks. So instead of this being an eight-week course, it's four weeks. Everything's packed into four weeks. a family, a spouse, uh, a business, a church, a job, whatever God has joined you to and has authored that it's yours, we say it shall remain. In the name of Jesus. And if you haven't gotten there yet, that it's called, it's drawn to you. In the name of Jesus. want to invite someone to the video this morning, feel free to do so. Jesus 
I thank you right now according to Psalm 43, Lord God. That you vindicate every single person under the sound of my voice. Amen. Rescue everyone on here from anything that is deceitful or wicked. You, oh God, are their stronghold. Come on. The Lord is our stronghold. You've not been rejected. I decree and declare the morning has stopped. The death bags have come off. Whatever was coming up against you, in your mind, your will, and your emotions, has lost its grip to harm you. It's lost its grip to oppress you. It's lost its grip to strangle you. This is talking about going to the water. This says, send me your light and your faithful care. But see, he's already done that. Jesus, the light of the world, he's living in you. Holy Spirit is in you. The word of God is in you. You are the light in this world. You are the light in this earth. The light is with you. The light is you. It's in you, working through you. Woo! Jesus, we thank you. I just command anything that is causing the light in you to be dimmed, to be removed and pushed out of the way, to be uh, ripped off that death bag. We command veils and death bags to come off of God's people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that we're able to praise you. We're able to take joy and delight in you. Oh, thank you, God. With singing, with dancing, all forms of musical instruments, we will praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And in verse 5, David is talking about, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Well, you know what? We just command the soul to not be downcast. Sometimes you got to command your own soul. I, my mind, will, and emotions, I command you right now. You are not downcast, ha, but you will revel and rejoice in the Lord. You are on top of the world. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to decree and declare that to your own self. you got to strengthen your own self up. But I say, depression has lost its grip. Come on. It's backed up and out away from you. It's lost its stranglehold. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We just thank you right now, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love this song, Don't Deserve You by Plum. It's really a good one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We don't deserve him, but because of what Jesus did, it makes it to where we do. Come on. He made us worthy and worth it. It was costly what he did. Mm. I decree and declare that everyone on here has put their hope in God. And we will praise Him, our Savior, and our God. And see, what come what may. What come what may, we praise the Lord. We can't live without the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to move this out of the way. What am I going to do with it? I guess I'll stick it over here on that side of the couch. I'm kind of in the corner where I keep the keyboard. So I pushed the keyboard out of the way. I set up here this morning in this little nook. Um, it's a gorgeous, I guess you could call it a sunroom, but it's like another den. It's a really large, long room. It's beautiful. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't deserve you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I really feel like some of you are relaxing in this. Weights are falling off. We command ungodly soul ties to be broken, severed. Weights, demonic burdens. Come on, burdens that are soulish burdens that weren't authored of the Lord. We command them to fall off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Impassivity as you may see the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So the enemy will fight you on your relationships. He will fight you on those relationships. But you have to keep pushing forward. You have to keep going. And that means when opposition comes, when you feel like you want to act one way or respond one way, but it's not the God way, the Jesus way. Come on, when it's not the proper way, you refrain your tongue, you restrain. And that again goes out to your emotions are an ocean. You don't have to be out in the ocean. You can have an emotion without cooperating with it. I'm standing on the beach and I'm looking at my emotions. My emotions are a barometer. I don't cooperate or act on my emotions. Thank you, uh, Joshua. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Yesterday, well, day before yesterday, y'all know, um, before the prayer class started, I was... uh, Locked in the car, I got home, and uh, I had a lot more stuff to do in that, the prayer curriculum, etc., for that class, and I was locked in the car because of the battery, um, and so I just left it that evening. It was probably close to dark anyway, so eventually it let me out of the car. It eventually let me out of the car. I come inside, so yesterday... Uh, I was headed to the gym and obviously didn't get anywhere. So I had, um, the neighbors helped me. A man came and we took out what was in that car. I don't even know how it lasted as long as it did. Cause it was like, uh, probably a one or two year battery that lasted for what, four years or something. It's like for real. <laughs> it was like a little battery. And so we bought a normal battery, the one that it's supposed to be for the car that I have. Um, and so it's a five year, nice, powerful battery. Hallelujah. <laughs> so anyway, hey, Kimberly. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. What is this? Remind me you're here by Jason Gray. He's got some good songs. Y'all, he's got some good songs. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Battery favor, amen, 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 amen. It was favor, I'm telling you. So they drove me to get the battery, and then they came and, you know, they installed it. So wasn't that wonderful. And um, for whatever reason, I mean, there was almost like no warning of any kind. There was an issue of any kind um, other than it locked me really in the car. Um, And so when the individual came over and we went to get the battery, I literally just had to stuff a jacket in the door to where the door couldn't shut. Because it, you know, I didn't want the door shut because we had to get it. We had to crank it, obviously, once the battery was in it. And maybe once the battery was hooked up, it would have been okay. But in case... You know, in my mind, I was like, well, just in case it's not the battery we think it is. (laughs) 
but that's what it was. I see Prophet Robert on here. Blessings. Good morning. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Nancy. Who else is on here? Serge, Jacqueline, Danielle, Nima, Nikita, Samantha, Kelly, uh, Joshua. Let's see. Kimberly, Kim, Debbie, Diane, Diana, Nancy, Leah, Vicky, Angie, Callie, Brandy. Oh, hey, you guys. And Marie. Wow, there's so many of you that are on here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sherry is on here. I want to know your city and state. I try to kind of learn your regions. A little bit like like who's watching who's out there this morning I'm gonna turn the music down some we're gonna talk more about love you might think wow you just kind of hit that hard and running this morning with a little bit of uh, warfare or something but I just know what I experienced I released a couple of words yesterday and literally I began to see uh, all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be the responses in oftentimes it's people's hearts but that empowers um, the demonic, okay? So we have to, that's you, that's me, we have to watch our hearts, okay? So that we can have an emotion and don't outright act on that emotion. Having an emotion is not the sin, it's acting on it, right? <laughs> so the enemy would like you to act out of the heart and character of God. And this is that the love series that we're doing. So when things like that happen, what do you do? You bless people. You obviously don't bow down and let them continue to crush you. I'm not saying that. Y'all know I'm not one for that. Uh, I think it's because I had so much of that in my life. Um, that God is just like, you know, that's not everyone's assignment. Some people, especially if you've never yielded in love you know it's possible you might get a word from the lord that says you know uh let them slap you on this cheek turn the other cheek and let them slap you on that one that can be a relevant word but that's not everybody's season um the lord was like they've done slapped you here they've done slapped you there now no say the word no i don't allow you know what i'm saying so there are times to say i have worth i have value this is not okay whatever it happens to be because as we've been talking in this love series, we've been talking about what love is, what love is not. So in different verses and scriptures that we've been talking about, it says things like, don't just look to your own interest, but also look to the interest of others. That verse does not say you can't look to your interests. Obviously, you need to be looking to your interests. You can't not pay your house payment. You can't not um, buy your food. Now, you might think, well, where does that come into? Because there's times where I think maybe, or you've even talked, Tiffany, you know, come on, there's times where I've mentioned this, where God had me give my food away. It was all the food that I had. Well, that's the key right there. Did God tell you to do it? Or were you feeling compelled to do it? Or just being silly that day and not listening to anything other than just, I'm going to give everything away. You know, when God tells you to give something away, it's going to multiply or he's going to uh, give that back to you in some way. If God asks you to turn the other cheek, okay, there's times when the Lord says you tell them no. And then there's times where he says turn the other cheek. Bless them. You're to bless them anyway. Even if you tell a person no, you are to still bless them and love them, right? But there are times when uh, the Lord is like, you need to be taking care of you and your house and your home. What are you doing? Right? Sometimes we see that. We'll see, uh, I see that a lot in churches uh, where people, especially, maybe men do this too, but it, it seems more prevalent among us ladies. Come on, women. Come on, ladies. <laughs> Come on. Where someone will put their pastor in front of their husband or even put their pastor above God. Come on. We can't be doing that. It is God, it is our spouse, right? And then it is, you know, our children, extended family, and then it is the pastor and the uh, people of God and such. The Word of God says we're supposed to be good, especially to those who are brothers and sisters in Christ, especially to the beloved, to the brethren, 
right? But in doing that, you don't neglect certain things. Okay? It's just called being Holy Spirit led and listening to the heart of the Lord. Listening to uh, what he wants you to do that day. What he authors you to do, to do. If he's authored you to climb a high mountain. To grow supernatural foods. To multiply things in your cabinets. To be a storehouse. To give it out. Then you act on that. Okay? But if he has said, this is a time where I want you to gather and store up for you. And then release when I say to release. You don't want people who need what you have, who God authored them to get what you have, but you gave it somewhere else. So when the right people come, it's like birds. You don't want the wrong birds to come eat your fruit. So when the right birds get there, they, they're starved. That's kind of like that concept. And you're like, well, what has that got to do with love? You know, it's wonderful to love others, but you also can't neglect yourself. Now, what could this be like? I want you to understand that if all you do is pamper your own self, and that's all you've known and learned, this word, you know, I want you to understand this probably wouldn't be a word for you. This is more for people who have uh, harmed themselves by being, not having proper boundaries in relationships. And I'm not talking about walls. Walls won't let you love and will not let you be loved. You can't love, nor can, you can't give it, nor receive it. But proper boundaries will keep you uh, flowing in the right way. You can love and not be a limp noodle. Okay? Limp noodles get abused. Limp noodles uh, break. Okay? Now, we're in 1 John. We're briefly going to go over 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John today, but I'm only taking out certain scriptures. 1st John chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So we're in 1st John 3, verse 18. We're going to be in several of these, especially in um, chapters 3, 4, and 5 of 1st John. It's just hearing these verses. If you want to read them and go along with that, you can. Again, that verse 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Basically, don't just say you love people, but God wants to see the action behind that. He wants to see the action behind that. Ooh, come on. He wants to see the action behind that. We've all been guilty of that. Um, have you ever promised to give somebody money and then you just didn't do it? Okay. So don't just use your mouth and say you're going to do something, but back it up with the action. Or we say, oh, I love my enemies. But then have you been foul mouthing them? Have you been praying they, their demise and death? <laughs> That's not right. Proper actions, obviously, if they can't stand you and hate you. Um, it's doubtful that the Lord would ask you to go knock on their door and say, Hey, let's hang out. Let's go get a coffee. You know, that kind of thing. But you can be loving and kind. If you were to pass them in the parking lot, you smile with genuine love. And if you're not there yet, you ask God, God, give me a genuine love so that if that person walked by me and the Lord, even in my own life, there were two faces right now that just popped up in front of me. That if I saw them in the parking lot, would I be able to genuinely smile at them? Now, it's okay if you were to see somebody you're not expecting to see and you go. But then you've got to recover the sh initial shock of that. <laughs> Don't go off into, how dare they be up in this parking lot? You know, we can't be doing that. It's like, put the action behind the words. We say we believe this. Where's the action? The action is, if you know, you saw your worst enemies hoping you was dead. And I don't mean like uh, more in a spiritual sense. I don't necessarily mean in the natural. In the natural, if somebody's threatened you, you call the police. Come on. You stay away from people like that. But I'm talking about people who are trying to maybe uh, behind closed doors assassinate your business, assassinate your character, or assassinate your um, 
family, assassinate your ministry, whatever it happens to be, right? If you saw that person and you know they're doing that and you see them walking across the parking lot after the initial shock of seeing them, or maybe you're not shocked seeing them, can you just be like, Or are you going to be like, because this would be the wrong way. i got to operate in love. You know, that's wrong. That would be wrong. Okay, but the genuine, can you, can you let the true genuine love flow out? Because the true genuine love will disarm whatever spirit they're operating in that's not like Jesus. Love is a fire. Love itself is an anointing. It is an anointing that tears walls, barriers, veils, stoppages out of ears. It tears all these things down and makes it to where that person's heart, they don't even know why, but they're like, why did I hate them? What is wrong with me? Why have I been trying to take them out? I don't seem to feel like that about them now. What is up with that? Because whatever spirit was controlling them that they were operating in, love will disarm that. And then I always pray, especially if I know I have to have a conversation with somebody. I usually call somebody who is mature, not the gossip queen of whatever. I call somebody who's mature, right? And ladies, I said queen, and there's a reason. Because you don't see too many men who run around gossiping. So, ladies, we got to come up higher. I'm just saying. Okay? Doesn't mean it can't happen. But I'm just saying, for the most part, ladies, we we got to come up higher. And so, it's like you pray before you have an encounter with someone that you know you got to have a conversation with. You know you want a good result. And you have to remember the whole time you're conversating with them, the whole time you're praying, before you conversate with them, keep the goal before your eyes. What is the goal of me having this conversation with this individual? These are wrong motives. Is my goal to get my point across? Well, that's your secondary goal. Your first goal is to have the relationship restored to a point of civility or greater. Okay, to civility or greater, meaning you want to at least be civil with that person. Y'all can still disagree when you walk away from each other. But on your part, because the Bible says, be at peace with everyone as much as it depends on you. You can't control their actions or the, anything, and you can't even be concerned with it. You can't change them. You can't nothing. Okay? So, the first thing is unity with that individual. Unity with an individual, restoration of a relationship does not mean you're going to agree thought with thought. You can walk arm in arm with an individual and not be in agreement on all points. Okay? Wow. Wow, Kim, that's awesome. She apologized after 25 years of you praying for her. Wow, how wonderful. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then the secondary reason, if you're having a conversation because something does have to be settled. And here's the thing. If you don't work with that person, if you don't interact with that individual, if they're not a part of your family, some things, it doesn't even matter. As long as you have some type of restored civility and um, respect for one another, you really don't have to push any kind of points. You just walk away. But if you're having to interact with this person on a daily basis, on a continuous basis, on a futuristic level, etc., your spouse, etc., come on, you come together in respect and love. You can't, again, you can't control them. You control you. You get to control you. You can't control another person. I can walk up to a wild, crazy lion, bear, tiger, acting a fool, and still respect that individual and speak in a normal, loving way. 
I don't have to behave in their manner. I don't have to behave like them. I don't have to speak like them. I don't have to act like them. But when you have to have a continued relationship with an individual, then you do at least need to have your point heard. If they won't hear it, you can't make them. Hear me. If they won't hear it, you can't make them. Can't make them. That's why you have to stay calm and the way you talk to a person will allow the opportunity, the door, the path, and a broadening to occur to where you can get your point across. Well, um, I wanted to let you know, I'm sure this wasn't um, what was meant for me to feel in this situation, but you said this. I think you're meaning this, and it made me feel like this, so what did you really mean? I just need some clarification on that. They may say, oh, no, that's not what I meant. Oh, what did you mean? Oh, okay. It fixes it. Or they may say, yeah, I meant it like that, or even worse. Well, then you don't get mad. You just go, oh, okay. Well, and depending on what it is, you can, uh, if it's something... You know, some people you can put at a distance and go, well, we're going to see each other sometimes, but I'm not agreeing with that, and I'm not okay with that, and we're at a difference of opinions with that, but thanks for talking to me anyway. So you don't ever have to act like a crazy person with people. We remain in love. Verse 23, 1 John chapter 3, verse 23, it says, And this is his commandment. We should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. As he gave us commandments to love one another. Wow. Love one another. Chapter 4, it says this. It says, Chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And you can translate that into, especially if you know they are a saved child of God, but they're not hearing you. They refuse to hear or entertain something. It lets you know that they're, they're in, you know, a spirit of error. But because somebody's in a spirit of error, again, does not mean we are to treat them in a nasty way. Or tell them. I don't even have to tell a person who's in a spirit of error. You're in a spirit of error. That's going to cause more harm. That's going to cause more headbutting. Some things, especially if I don't, if I'm not. Even if you're living with the person, here's a good thing for marriage counseling and such. You know, it's like, don't push their buttons. You know what sets them off. If it's not, if they're not making you do something, uh, you know, if they want to watch horror movies and you know horror movies are not good and you know that's like, oh, then don't be in the room with them when they're watching it. You just say, Lord, you know, I'm not in agreement with that. So I ask you to speak to them. And don't say, Lord, pour out your fire on them. You know, that's that's not love. That's not right. Because anything you pray for your spouse, you're praying on you. Because you're one. God doesn't see you as two separate things anymore. You're one. So you pray hatred, evil, and crap on them. It's just praying it on you. It's just praying it on your own self. It says right here in verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. But you know what? There's a verse It also says God is love. God is love. Love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. That's that spiritual birth. And knows God. So if you're in a relationship with God, you not only know love, because you've pressed in to spend time with God. He's loving on you. You'll be loving to others. You can tell when you've not spent enough time around God is when you're hateful towards other people. Come on, somebody. Verse 8. Who, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Remember the disciples. I've said this more than once. The disciples said because the Samaritans wouldn't receive Jesus. At that time, they, you know, just was like dismissed him. You know, they weren't very respectful to him or anything. And so the disciples, once they got out of there, they said they recognized the power in their own voices and what they could command all around them. There was no doubting they could call fire down from heaven. Shall we call fire down from heaven on them? 
Come on, for the way they treated you? They knew they could call fire down on heaven on that whole village. They just wipe out all the Samaritans. Call fire down from heaven. And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. He rebuked them. Basically, how dare you say and think stuff like that? Now, sometimes people go, but you pray prayers like the fire go back against and da-da-da-da-da. Well, see, I'm talking about the fire going back against the demonic structure that uh, whatever they've agreed with, not the person. If it's in my face and it's got me by the throat and it says, I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to sit here just going, I love you, Lord. That's different. That thing's in my face. It's trying to take me down. I'm going to go after it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to annihilate it. But if it's over here on the sidelines going, I'm going to get you. I'm this. I'm that. I'm just going to praise the Lord and ignore it. So there's a difference from that thing in your face. Now, if it gets in my face and doesn't touch me. Oftentimes, I'll ignore that too. But I was given a directive from the Lord. So I usually ask the Lord. He said, if anything walks across your path. And he's talking about demonic. Okay? Take it down. That means if it's in my face, take it down. If it's over here, ignore it. It's a distraction. Okay, some of you have been taunted by people who've never even got in your presence, laid a hand on you, or got anywhere near you because they taunted you from a distance. Do not let your whole life be consumed with people who are taunting you at a distance. That's all of us. That's me, that's you, that's any of us. Verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. I just command the gun of the enemy right now, the whole end of that barrel to be smushed up. Let it backfire, the plan of the enemy. Let it backfire into the enemy's face. Okay. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And that living through him is loving others. Verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. Now this right here. This right here. You got to understand, this isn't talking about the kind of relationship where we can see him face to face and that kind of thing. It says, if we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He who abides, verse 16, he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love will make you bold. Verse 17 says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. If people start talking about judgment, you know, I've had how Apostle Rusty, blessings, blessings. If people start talking about judgment, um, you know, and someone begins to try to curse you or say you're under the judgment of God, the hand of God is against you, that kind of stuff. I have this because I know God loves me. I spend time with him. I have boldness. Love will make you bold in the day of judgment. When people try to pass judgment on you, it's like, no. No, God is actually with me. That's your opinion. I don't know where you got that opinion from. But I pray it does change, but that's your opinion. I'm walking with the Lord. Love will make you bold. Love will, because love gives you your identity. And so when people speak contrary wise to the identity, it doesn't rock your boat. It doesn't smash you with fear. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So when you're being threatened, when you're having situations arise, when you're having a money issue, you're not fearful because you know God has your back. He loves you so much, he's there to catch you and not let you fall and hit the ground and go splat. He's there to catch your finances. I will say this, the sooner you let go, 
That's me, you, any of us. The sooner we let go of the fear of falling splat in the finances and stop trying to control the reins of the finances, that's when victory comes. And if you see your finances doing that number, you begin to sow even more. And they'll start doing this number. Every single time. Every single time. As an example. Okay. When I knew something was wrong with the car, well, it was time for me to sew probably anyway. It was time for me to sew. I knew it was time for me to sew. And I knew something was wrong with the car. I could have held that money back and said, no, I might need that to fix the car. No, that'd be fear talking. God said it's time to sew. So I sewed to who he said and the amount that he said. Come on. And he took care of what I needed for the car. Thank you, Jesus. Everything I spent on that battery and to have it installed, the install fee and everything, came to me. It came back to me. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, we can't operate in fear in finances. We can't operate in fear in our giving. We can't operate in fear in our love. Like, and again, hear me on this. It's like sometimes, and it's a natural human response, but it's human. It's not agape. It's not God love. It's a natural response to sometimes to draw back and go, I don't want burnt. I'm not letting you near me because of what that person that I don't even know now did to me. That is wreaking havoc on your own life because now... You won't let people who want to care about you in. Been there, done that. Come on. So we're decreeing and declaring right now that those that are doing that, that you, you know, open and let love come in, in Jesus' name. Wow. And here's a good one right here. Verse 20. 1 John 4, verse 20. If somebody says, I love God and hates his brother... He is a liar, for he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Essentially, this is saying that if love is not abiding in you, you have not seen God at any time. The way you get to see God is if love is abiding in you. I can see, feel, and hear the Lord when I'm operating in love. And I can tell you this from experience. Every time and any time I've had hatred in my heart, it depends on the level of it, okay? There's times I'll go to the Lord and he's like, you're hating so-and-so. But I'm seeing him I'm having a vision and whatever because I'm just keeping myself clean, okay? But I'm talking about if, um, if it's really severe or something. It's like, well, Lord, where are you? What's going on? Well, my focus was taken from the Lord and was taken over here to hatred. I turned my face to a distraction, Okay? Verse 21, and this commandment, it's a commandment. We're commanded to do this. We have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. This doesn't mean your flesh and blood brother and you can ignore your sisters. It doesn't, you know, it's talking about brothers and sisters, but it's talking about natural, spiritual. It's talking about strangers. It's talking about all kinds of people, everyone. Love is measured and given out freely and is not based on what someone does. That's agape love. God doesn't restrict his love from you because you sin, because you goof up, because you weren't perfect. He's perfecting you. That would be like, I mean, that'd be like saying God is um, double-minded or something. First, he says he's perfecting you. So if he's perfecting you, he knows you have imperfections, failings, things that's wrong with you. So he's not going to turn around while he's perfecting you and be badgering and beating you because of those imperfections. (laughs) We get it twisted sometimes. Our thinking isn't right sometimes. Come on. And anytime our thinking isn't right, that is a mindset that that's where we have agreed with the devil. Our mind is a powerful gate and it hears three types of voices. It can hear God. Come on, it can hear the Lord. 
um, angels and godly counsel. Or it can cooperate with our own flesh, our own evil desires, good or bad, okay? Um, or it can hear the enemy. Satan, his demons, it can hear ungodly counsel, come on, that kind of thing. But the thing is recognizing the voice, the word of God says, will recognize the voice of the stranger. Are you decreeing and declaring that over yourself? Well, I do right now. You will recognize the voice of a stranger. You will not follow the stranger. You will not agree with the stranger. You will not bed down with the stranger. You will not lay down with the stranger. Come on. Amen, Apostle Rusty. Remove stinking thinking. Come on. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Well, I'm not going to keep y'all much longer. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I think that's all I wanted to say today. I've got a bunch of things I need to get done. Um, it should go well. I've got to... Whew, several things I need an oil change. I have to, so y'all be praying for that, <clears throat> that I get the oil changed, the car inspected. You have to do that here. Um, that I get everything, plates and all that kind of stuff, driver's license, everything transferred over. So, isn't that going to be fun? <laughs> and, um, so, anyway, I don't know how much all that's going to cost, but come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time to get it done. So, I want to bless y'all. Uh, let me know your prayer requests. Yes, Teresa, it is. Level 7 book is out. The finance book is out for the finance class. So, classes don't start back for the university until January 5th, the week of January 5th. Um, everybody's on vacation. And you might think, but you had a prayer class. Well, we didn't have time for a whole eight-week session. And everybody's been asking me to teach a prayer class. And... It's an intensive. It's a lot packed in. And then at the end, we have the interactive portion. Ah, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, again, we have workbooks one through seven. All of them have been uploaded, published. The prayer uh, book will... Uh, right now, I'm in the process. Like, for instance, I wasn't sure how far I would get. Week two almost has nothing on it. I think it was week three and four had a little something. So... I'll be totally redoing that one all over the place, but the cover is beautiful. I've gotten the cover done for that book, and it'll be uploaded. It'll probably be a few weeks down the road, but it should at some point be available on Amazon as well. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. Who on here needs some kind of prayer? Oh, Pam, you're on level five. Yay! Well, that will be the evangelism, and we do have the evangelism book available on Amazon. So, yay! Prayer to break stubborn soul ties. Well, Father God, we know, we thank you for Bridget's heart to be obedient to you and your heart, and so we just command any ungodly soul ties. That shouldn't be there. That's not authored of you, Lord God, to disconnect from her. What belongs to her comes back to her, that part of her mind, will, and emotions, and heart for the restoring of her soul come back to her right now by the denomous power of Holy Spirit. And what belongs to them goes to them for the restoring of their soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So there's still time to sign up for the prayer class if you want to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is so good. He's so good. He's so good. Somebody on here, you have a headache. And you almost feel like you're short of breath. I want to pray for those people right now. 
a bad breakthrough for your finances right now. But whoever has that pain, it's almost like a, you feel like you can't breathe, like something strangulating you or keeping your chest tight or something and then a pain in your head. Yes, I do have Cash App, Pam. I do have Cash App. So whoever that is, we just command the pain in your head to stop. Whatever band of constriction is on you to be removed. Whatever's constricting your lungs, your chest, your throat right now, that tightness, we command it to go. And untangle you in Jesus' name. And whoever on here, I, somebody else also has. Let me know if that was you. Okay. I'm also picking up somebody, um, it's kidney. Feels like the left kidney. We command kidney stones to dissolve. To be passed painlessly in Jesus' name. To miraculously disappear in Jesus' name. Okay, so that chest was uh, Vicky. Okay. Nancy said left temple pain. Come on, that's exactly what I was sensing and feeling. We command that pain to go. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Donna. Hey, Cheryl. Yes, Pam, I can. I can message you my cash app. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen, Sarah. We're agreeing with you right now that that uh, heart rate, if it is not the proper rate, you know, that it adjusts to what Jesus says is normal for you in Jesus' name. I just feel like somebody right now, you are so wrapped around by the waters of the Lord, the streams of the Lord. You're safe. You haven't felt safe, but I want to tell you you're safe. You're safe. You're safe. You're so surrounded by these different streams. They're all around you that the enemy is on the outside of those streams and cannot get to you. Amen. Woo! And somebody, it feels like you've been holding your breath for a really long time. And so, Father God, we thank you right now that that individual does this number. <sighs> Let a release be done right now in Jesus' name. All the stress, you got to go. You're gone. Jacqueline, we speak safety over you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for safety for Jacqueline. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Ooh wow. Well, we command that stress to be far away from you, Skip, right now. No more breath holding. Come on. Unless we're holding in the breath of the Lord. But the, here's the thing with that. We breathe him in and then we breathe him back out again. Why would we do that? We go to the Lord, mouth to mouth resuscitation where we breathe him in. Life. And then we turn to those we interact with on a daily basis. And we breathe that love, that breath, that resurrection life. That encouragement out on them. We go back to the Lord. We take a breath in and we breathe it back out. Come on. 
Pam, you've been having that hip pain, okay? We command hip pain to go. Whatever's um, causing that symptom, a repair, a restructuring of the DNA and a restoration of um, cells in the body there. Any form of inflammation that shouldn't be there, a fluid and such, we command it to go. Anything that should be there, like they're in joints, joints are supposed to have a good kind of fluid that's in there, so we command that to be there at the proper levels. In Jesus' name. Anne Marie, I just see you right now. I know you put on here that um, rivers of healing, water streams of life. But for you, as well as many others, I see the Lord picking you up and just dipping you like this. Just re dipping you over and over again in a continual state of um, healing, a continual state of refreshment, that resurrection life, like Cheryl said. Nancy said, is one leg shorter than the other, Pam? Well, if it is, we command it to uh, them both to be the same length now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Amen. Safety. Dillip, we just say right now that the angels of God are surrounding you. Your town, your city, your village. Protection in Jesus' name. We command Mika to be healed. We thank you right now, Lord God, for your glory, for the healing of Mika in Jesus' name. Well, Jacqueline, you need to change your words too, though. You just said something like, you can't take this again. That's not the truth. That is a lie. Number one, we're saying it's not going to happen. But it doesn't matter what comes your way in life. Nothing takes you down. Come on. There's nothing that can harm you. Because the Lord is your mental protection. He is your physical protection. He's your financial protection. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Nicole. Well, I'm going to hop off of here. i got to get all this stuff done. I will see y'all tonight. Remember, it's 9 p.m. Eastern for the prayer class, 8 p.m. Central and 6 p.m. Pacific. So I will see y'all this evening and be prepared. I Hopefully tonight we're going to be getting more into the praise and the worship and those concepts. Um, and we're going to be uh, pulling out a few charts, different types of things. And remember, you can always... Um, Watch the video again and again. Take your notes. And I will catch you later, guys. See ya.